In today's video, I'm gonna be interviewing Kyle McGuire, who was working as a union tradesman at a pretty stable job, but it wasn't a job that had a lot of room for growth. So he was making decent money, but there wasn't that many opportunities to advance. So he started looking online at careers he could get into that don't require a college degree or any experience. And within one year, he was making six figures a year in a remote job. So this is gonna be his story, and we're gonna be sharing all the juicy details, like which career it is, how much he got paid, how long it took him to get into the career, how he got into the career, etc. So if you appreciate videos like this, go ahead, gently tap that like button and also hit the subscribe button. Let's try to get this video to 300 likes. What's happening, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I have somebody who recently about a year, a little bit of over a year ago, went into tech sales and they originally started off with the kind of like entry level job SDR BDR role and they actually just graduated into another role. So first of all, congratulations for that. And I wanted to get somebody who was about a year, year and a half into it to kind of show your progress if you do decide to go into tech sales. So thank you so much, Kyle, for coming on the channel. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Hey, Shane, thanks so much for having me. And uh, hey, thanks for uh, the congratulations. I'm really excited. Awesome. All right. So let's go ahead and kind of start at the beginning. Maybe if you can talk about your background a little bit. Uh, and kind of like what you did before you got into tech sales and then kind of the story of you discovering tech sales and eventually, uh, you know, getting into that first BDR role. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I, I, I was, a, I've been blue collar worker my whole life. Uh, union guy grew up in steel mill country in the Midwest. Um, and just that's, that's kind of what I knew uh, started off with Honda ended up working for, uh, a big company, a food manufacturing company called ConAgra. Um, and then just when COVID hit, you know, kind of got tired of spending all my hours. Um, remember the grocery stores were empty of food in the beginning. Yeah, well, I was, I was, you know, working nonstop around the clock to get them filled back up again. And it's uh, just not, not a great way to live, you know, can't, not scalable, uh, really just wanted more out of life. So um, found course careers, um, and it really uh, set me in the direction of uh, really changing my life. Got it. So you discovered Course Careers, which uh, just for a little bit of context, Course Careers is uh, Troy's company. Troy is the CEO of Course Careers. Um, and he basically teaches people tech sales. He teaches them the basics of it. And then he partners with companies and helps them to get jobs in tech sales. So these are entry level roles. Uh, there are people who are getting jobs in less than a month. And I'm not like being hyperbolic when I say that, literally people getting jobs in less than a month. Um, so uh, that is kind of what we're talking about in this video. So I forgot to mention this, but if you do want to learn more about tech sales, Troy does have a free class on his website. You can check that out. He's going to tell you like the different roles in tech and kind of other roles that you could move in down the line, as well as the skills that it involves, whether it's a good fit for you or not a good fit for you. I did take the class myself. I thought it was very useful. I will go ahead and put that down in the description below. And if you decide that you want to use Troy's service where he trains you in tech sales and he gets you interviews with companies, then you can use the coupon code Shane50, I believe it is. I'll put that down there. I forgot what the coupon code is, but I'll put that down in the description as well as the pinned comment below. You discovered course careers and uh, you started taking the curriculum. And at the time you were actually one of Troy's first students. So it was a little bit less basic than it is now. And he didn't actually have partnerships with companies like he does now. Uh, so can you kind of talk about the uh, curriculum uh, about a year or so ago? Yeah. So, uh, you know, you, you hit the nail on the head. Um, it's, it's a much more robust uh, course now than it was uh, kind of when I went through it. I was I, virtually the first uh, successful student to go through the class. Um, it was more of a, for me, it was really a worksheet, a Google worksheet on, on a shared drive. Uh, that's that's kind of what it was for me. Um, but the curriculum was there, right? The meat and the potatoes, uh, the, the actual uh, stuff that uh, Troy wanted to get across and, and needed to uh, needed his students to learn. That was still there. Um, so uh, it, it just got a, a much nicer polish on it now. Um, and yeah, there wasn't, uh, he, he didn't quite have uh, the fleshed out idea of having companies, you know, on, on board, uh, kind of preemptively ready to accept some of these students uh, and, and get them more permanent jobs. So I kind of, um, I, you know, a little different of a story for me. I kind of graduated the class and uh, uh, really had to take what I learned 
um, and applied it to finding a job. So I, you know, I had to prospect out decision makers, um, apply cold outreach and see what I could land. Um, and I landed, I landed, um, I, I started with eight jobs and I um, ended up with uh, going through four, four different companies, you know, interview process. And I uh, ended up with two job offers uh, the exact same day. Pretty cool going from, you know, uh, blue collar, no college, uh, really, you know, kind of what are you doing in this background, uh, in, in this area to uh, having two job offers the same day and, and kind of picking my own destiny. Pretty cool. Yeah, that that is really awesome. Um, so just to clarify really quickly, uh, you were doing the course part time. So you were working full time while you were going through the course. And I believe you said it took about three months or so to get through the course for you. And then um, after you got through the course, how long did it take for you to actually get your first job offer? It was less than a month. Um, it was, it was, we're talking weeks. Um, I, I, now it did take, you know, I got the job offer in towards the beginning of, uh, end of February, beginning of March. And uh, I didn't start at the job until April. Um, but I, I, you know, so there's a little gap, but like, yeah, getting the job offer, it was literally, it was like three, three, three to four weeks after I graduated the course. Awesome. So basically three and a half, four months or so between uh, you discovering the course and starting it and getting your first job offer, uh, an entry level uh, SDR, was it SDR or a BDR role? To me, those, those terms are completely interchangeable. I don't really see uh, um, a difference, a variation in those, but uh, for all intents and purposes is BDR role. Basically, so it took three and a half, four months or so for you to get that first mm -hmm. entry level job. And if mm -hmm. you don't mind me asking, uh, what was the pay like for that first one? So um, I can't lie. So I did take a little bit of a pay cut only because I was very experienced at my previous position. I was in a um, more of a crew lead capacity type role um, uh, and it was a union. Um, so I, I made pretty decent, but uh, my first, so my first role um, in the SDR world uh, was around probably around like 50, 50 to 55,000 a year total. Uh, that was base plus OTE, not the greatest. And really the market has already, um, changed since then. Um, that has really gone up, uh, since then the base level, uh, SDR pay has really gone up since that, at that point, that was kind of the norm uh, for, for the, my geographical area. Um, but since then, it's even become more um, work from home base, less centralized. And because of that, uh, bases have gone up across the board uh, when you look around at SDR jobs and BDR jobs. Yeah. And, you know, one thing I will mention uh, really quickly is, you know, you were one of Troy's first students, and this was before he actually formed partnerships with companies. So the fact that he was able to get you, um, I think you said you, you applied to eight really you know, pretty decent companies and you actually got four invites uh, mm -hmm. to get interviewed. That kind of just shows the ridiculous amount of demand that there is for this position. Uh, because, you know, there's some careers out there where you might apply to a hundred different places and you might get maybe two to four interviews. And these are like pretty well-known careers. So when you're seeing numbers like that, where you're applying to eight places, you're getting four interviews. I mean, that just shows how much demand there is for this position. And that was before Troy even set up the partnerships with the companies. Now you pretty much automatically get like eight interviews right after you graduate or something like that, like 10 interviews, he told me. So um, that's a that's that's pretty amazing. Uh, and, you know, I always tell people on this channel, the number one most important uh, metric you want to look at is demand because everything else follows demand. It's kind of like the law of gravity. There's a lot of demand for a certain skill set. You know, the pay is going to go up. They're going to treat you better. You're going to have more opportunity to rise up the ranks. It's just on and on and on. Like everything else gets better when there's more demand. So can we maybe talk about uh, your promotion that you just recently got? Um, what position is it for one? And if you don't mind, again, if you could maybe tell me uh, what, uh, what the salary is like. And if you're not comfortable, it's totally fine. You can maybe just talk about, generally speaking, uh, what the salary is like in a position like that. Uh, yeah, so um, I'm, I'm now I'm with a, a company called Sonic U. 
Um, and I'm an inside sales rep for them, uh, full sales cycle. Um, definitely de- six figures. We'll say, we'll say we're at, you know, we're sitting at a hundred, um, with, um, I mean, to be honest with you, the, one of the main reasons I took, uh, this role, um, with this company is because, uh, they're, they're growing exponentially. The sky is the limit. Uh, really, uh, they have a great product, a great market fit. Um, they have had a lot of success with inbound. Um, and with my background in, in aggressive outbound, um, I believe it's a great fit for me. Uh, it's kind of a wide open, uh, you know, untouched uh, opportunity for me to really just go out there and, and go after uh, aggressive outreach, go after some of these um, bigger systems that they sell to. Um, hospital systems is what they sell to. And so it's just, um, it, it's one thing to say in, in theory, you know, my base is good. Uh, and in theory, I should be hitting around 100 to 115 this year. Um, but I want to blow that out of the water, to be honest with you. I want to make some big waves and do some big things with this company uh, to really kind of blow that out. The world is my oyster. It's really, it's really up to me uh, how much I make at this point. Awesome. So basically, you are approximately a year and maybe a few months in to working in tech sales and you've already mm-hmm. hit that. You're probably very, very likely going to hit that six figure level at this point. You're right. Yes. Okay. You're hundred yeah. percent right. And you might blow it out of the water by quite a bit as well, which is hey, awesome. I love it. I love that's it. right. That's right. <laughs> I mean, what, there's not that many careers out there that you can do that where you, you know, you go into the career, you have no experience in the career itself, no sales experience. And you're about a year in or so, and you're hitting that six figure level. I mean, what other careers that you can you do that? Very, very few. You're you're 100 percent right. And then uh, to circle back a little bit, um, you know, so there's two things. So there's uh, two two takeaways for me. One is, um, you know, you spoke about that demand and about uh, the market needs of of the SDR, the BDR role. Um, and you know, if I'm being 100 percent honest with you, it's because. Um, Really, this 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 role is not for everybody. Um, it's it's it it is it it's a grind of a job. Um, you have to uh, wake up. And something I heard recently is sales is a transfer of emotion. Um, so you kind of have to have that energy. You have to bring that passion and that energy into your job and and, and that call, that email, whatever it is. You have to put your your you know your passion into it, and you're trying to. In, invoke that, that that you're trying to transfer some of that passion over to you know the prospect and so um it, it can be a grind because you hear a lot of no um and when you hear a lot of no you gotta you have to compartmentalize and kind of move past that and so it's not for everybody um but um that's kind of why that demand is there is because um they are look they, they it takes a, a a type of person that is really hungry and and just really wants it uh and and can have that passion and bring that drive every day um and that's what that's what it takes and and so if you if if you have a college degree if you don't have a college degree it doesn't matter if you have the passion um then i, I you know i truly believe you can be successful uh, as a salesperson, and especially in the tech in the tech vertical, the money and and the the promotion, uh, the it's one thing it's one thing to not have a college degree and get into an entry level job, but a, a whole other aspect of it is does not having a college degree does 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 having or not having that college degree hold you back um, from seeing avenues for promotions and and things like that. Um, And I, you know, from my perspective, I don't see that at all. Um, I really, I really don't. Um, Once you're in the game, it's really about those KPIs, those, those key performance indicators. That's, that's really what it's about hitting your metrics, um, having that hustle showing up every day and and, and getting those numbers. Um, Everything else doesn't matter. Nothing. All of it's just talk after that. It, it, you can like you, your boss could like you, could not like you personally, but if you hit those numbers and you're making the company money, then it doesn't. It, that doesn't even matter. Um, numbers lie. You know, men lie, women lie. Numbers don't. Right. I, I love the way you put that. Yeah, 
Um, is there kind of a certain type of personality that you see doing well in this type of position? And specifically, I'm kind of referring to introvert versus extrovert. Do you think introverts wouldn't be good in this position? I've seen introverts and extroverts excel in this kind of role. I've seen introverts who think that they would are, are going to struggle in this role, um, but get in the role and then um, it almost blossoms blossom something inside of them. Um, and that doesn't mean that they're like suddenly an extrovert uh, in life. It just means that um, sitting at a desk behind a computer with a headset on uh, kicks, you know, flips a switch for them. And all of a sudden they feel a little, uh, especially when you, when you really know your product, if you, even if you're an introvert, it doesn't matter if you know your product really well, and you know, that that product is a need for your market, then it's really more, the role is really more teaching the market, you know, about that need, exploring that need, kind of amplifying that need so that they take a more proactive instead of a reactive approach to it. And then, you know, trying to, you know, have your solution fit that need. Uh, and, and so in that essence, you know, I've really seen introverts, um, kind of excel uh they, they 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 rise to that occasion they become that that teacher um they're impassioned by their product they know that their product works they know that there's a need for it and so they 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 just feel emboldened to go out there and kind of have those conversations um now in their day-to-day -day life are they still an introvert yeah definitely they're, it didn't change them uh you know in their core being but it uh just gave them another avenue um, that they can kind of uh, do something that they didn't classically think that they would be able to do. Speaking of uh, kind of like being too salesy, I kind of just wanted to talk about this role uh, in tech sales uh, where you're basically solving problems for companies and then maybe contrast that to what people would typically, uh, because this is one of the biggest objections I see in the comments section, is people think it's like a little bit too salesy, like you're a used car salesman or maybe you're like a timeshare salesman, that sort of thing. Uh, like you're convincing somebody to get something that isn't necessarily going to help them versus a tech mm -hmm. sales role. So can you kind of talk about the difference between those two? Yeah, uh, you know, when when you're selling uh, business to business in, in the tech world, um, it's not just money on the line. That per The person who's purchasing could be their job on the line. Um, you know, so... They take the purchase with uh, a lot, a lot more serious. There's a lot less knee-jerk reaction. You know, when you're making a personal buying choice, um, a lot of times you're you're looking at features, costs, and things like that. But but you you're you typically you know the worst thing you're out of is you feel like you did you made a bad decision and you're out some money. Um, but when you're purchasing for a company. Um, you, you're now you're now you're putting your job, your livelihood, how you actually make money on the line with your purchasing choices. Um, so generally, you know, you'll go a lot more in depth, um, drag your feet a lot longer, and uh, cross those T's and dot those I's. Uh, more so than if you were making a personal uh, buying decision. And so for the seller. Um, it, you know, these cheap closing tricks and, and things like that. It's just not going to work. It's truly um, establishing a relationship um, and trying to um, convince them of the value of what your, your solution is offering. They're, they convince them of the need um, and trying and then trying to, you know, assure them that, uh, you've done this before, this is your realm, um, and that they are in good hands uh, with you. So what would you say to somebody who is thinking about possibly uh, signing up with Course Careers and becoming a SDR, BDR, getting into tech sales, but they're kind of on the fence and they're not sure whether they want to do it or not? Uh, what would you say just like practical advice to figure out if it's the right choice for them? Uh, yeah, um, I would say, you know, if if you think you have the grind and if you think you have the ability to um push through uh a lot of no's and rejection and and hunt for those yeses if if, if you have that ability 
then 100% sign up for Course Careers. It will change your life. Um, you can really make some uh, of quality living uh, in this in this vertical with uh, quality of life, quality of money. Um, you just it's really hard to beat without a college degree. It's it's virtually impossible. Um, and I, I can't think of a better path for somebody uh, who really has their eye on the prize and, and uh, has that drive inside of them. Awesome. I think that's uh, great advice. And, you know, I, I've kind of interviewed people at just about every level at this point. I've interviewed people who just started like a month ago, what they were making. Uh, I've inter- you know, I, this is an interview with you. You're about a year, a year and a few months in. You're making around six figures or so. Um, I interviewed another person who was about four years in or so. They're making around 220, probably even more than that this year. And then I interviewed another person who's five years in, but they also have quite a bit of experience uh, in tech as well as supply chain. And they're probably going to hit 600,000 this year. So it's very clear, you know, where you start. And if you have that grind, if you have the ability to produce results where you can go, you know, five years into your career, you could be making some, you know, 200, 300, maybe even 500 to $600,000 a year. So there's really not that many careers out there where you can do that, that have this insane amount of opportunity. Um, So that's why I talk about careers like this on the channel. This channel is basically like a cheat code for people. Um, Sometimes I talk about careers that require a college degree. There's some good ones, but there's a lot of careers out there that do not require a college degree and tech sales is one of them. So thank you so much for coming on the channel, Kyle, and and talking about your experience. Um, Maybe we'll get you back in like a a year or so. You can can talk about it again. Give us all an update. Uh, That would be awesome. But uh, yeah, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. Hey, thanks for having me, Shane. I hope I, I hope everyone enjoyed the the interview and um, yeah I'd love to uh, round up again maybe another year year and a half and I can be that you know two three hundred thousand dollar guy uh, giving the interview uh, telling my story again it'd be great.